Hi, I'm Randy Darby with TJ Snow Company, and today we'll discuss proper setup of a basic resistance welder. This video assumes a basic knowledge of the process and machine operation. So if you're new to the process, we recommend watching the videos linked in the description below. To set up the machine in the most efficient way, some tools are recommended. First, you'll need a tip force gauge for measuring weld force as provided by the force delivery system on the machine. Second, a weld current meter used to monitor output current and timing. And lastly, you'll need the proper setup chart for the material to be welded. Now let's discuss the setup chart and the information it provides. The chart assumes that you're welding materials of the same type and thickness. The leftmost column represents the material thickness in inches. And continuing from left to right is the material gauge, recommended tip face diameter, required tip force, weld current requirement, weld time, edge overlap, which is the distance from the edge of the material to the center of the weld, and weld spacing, the minimum distance between welds center to center to prevent shunning. The chart also calls out the correct copper classification for the electrodes being used to make the weld. With the proper tools in hand, we will begin by setting the weld force. It is required that the weld control is in the no weld condition before performing this function. This is so we don't weld through the force gauge and damage the instrument. Also, we need to ensure that the squeeze function on the weld control is at its maximum value of 99 cycles. In this example, we will be using 18 gauge mild steel with a force requirement of 650 pounds. We'll set the weld regulator to 30 PSI to start. With the proper electrodes installed in a line, place the load cell between the electrodes and cycle the machine. Based on the reading on the force gauge, you'll need to increase or decrease the air regulator as necessary and recheck until the force gauge reads 650 pounds force. The next step is to set the welding transformer tap switch, if provided to the lowest setting. With these steps done, we can now program the weld controller based on the chart recommendations. We should already have the squeeze function as its maximum value. The recommended weld time for 18 gauge mild steel is eight weld cycles. Depending on your control's feature set, current may be programmed in amps per the chart callout, 9,500 in this case. However, I recommend starting at around 10% below this value and then increasing from there based on weld tests. Now, if you are programming in percent current, also known as heat percent, set this value at 50% to start. Hold time will be set to 10 cycles. With these settings in place, you'll now install the current coil from the weld current meter around the secondary copper of the machine. The weld current meter may require some basic setups such as current range, AC or DC, and the segment of the weld to be captured in the measurement. If you do not have a weld current meter and you are programming in percent, you will have to increase the current in steps of 5% until a satisfactory weld test is obtained. You will not know the output current being produced. The proof will be in the successful weld. Now, place the controller in the weld mode and ensure water is circulating. Place coupons or part between the electrodes, where part geometry allows, there should be a quarter inch gap between the upper electrode and the material to reduce the pinch point risk. Initiate the machine and make the first weld. Observe the current reading on the weld scope. If the current is below the recommended value, increase the current in amps or percent until an appropriate current value is reached. If the recommended current value cannot be obtained, it may be necessary to increase the tap setting on the welding transformer to reach this value. Increase one tap position at a time and then re-weld. Weld testing is usually accomplished by way of a peel test. The weld nugget should be around the same diameter as the weld electrode face. If no weld current meter is available, this test will be performed after each weld until reaching a satisfactory result. Upon achieving a good result, the squeeze time may be gradually reduced in the interest of speed of production. However, be careful not to reduce this value so low that force does not have an opportunity to reach the desired value before current is applied, which would result in material expulsion. 
Now we've talked about the setup of a basic resistance welder. However, some machines are far more sophisticated and you'll want to make sure that you have enough knowledge of your equipment before performing weld schedule development. If you have any questions about the resistance welding process, feel free to contact us at tjsnow.com. Thank you.